بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين After Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about the consequence and the result of those tyrants and oppressors as examples for the believers to reassure their hearts uh, of the victory coming from Allah Azza wa Jal Allah Azza wa Jal then uh, starts talking about the nature of human being. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَا بِتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَّمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا As for man, when his Lord tests him and thus is generous to him and favors him, he says, My Lord has honored me. Now, this is the nature of mankind due to their ignorance. You see, <coughs> excuse me. Many people weigh things in, in the wrong or using the wrong scale. They see someone who is an, an oppressor, who's a tyrant, or a Muslim who's a sinful Muslim. And yet Allah Azza wa Jal showers him with favors, right? And mistakenly start thinking that, oh, okay, this is because Allah Azza wa Jal is favoring that person or that nation over others. To the extent that some people might even think, oh, Allah is favoring this non-believing nation over the Muslim nation by giving them this and that. And Allah Azza wa is refuting that, uh, as you will see. Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is, is telling us here that the scale that you need to, to use is, is different than that. Allah Azza wa can be uh, given and showering his favors upon an oppressor uh, as a means of gradually and progressively leading him to punishment. As the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is the correction of the type of scale, the perception we need to have regarding this issue. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is mentioned in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Albani, narrated by Uqba ibn Amr anhu. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you see Allah Azza wa Jal given one of his slaves from this dunya, Showering him with favors, wealth, children, real estate, power, right? Whilst he is sinning, then know that it is istidraj. Istidraj is to gradually and progressively leading someone to punishment. So in other words, the Prophet ﷺ in this text is clarifying the, the Quranic text saying that when Allah is given, don't say Allah is honoring because it's not necessarily true. It depends on the state of the person. If Allah is given a righteous person, a good Muslim, yes, Allah is honoring. But still, it is a test. In all situations, it's, it's a test. Allah Azza wa says, "When a blue comes, be sure that the best is We test you with, with things that are good and things that are bad, right? Or good, bad and good. It's all a test. When you have wealth, what's going to happen? The Prophet Sallallahu said that none of us, no feet will move on the day of judgment without being asked about. And then he mentioned wealth. Where did you earn it? Is it ill-gotten, or was it halal? Was it lawful? And wa fi ma How did you spend it? Did you spend it on things that are permissible? Or did you go buy wine with it? Or gamble? Or do this or do that? Or bribe this person to take some other people's rights? So wealth is not always a blessing. It can be a curse. It's a test. It depends on how you deal with it and your reaction to it. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَا بِتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا but when he, meaning Allah, tests him and restricts his provision, he says, my Lord has humiliated me. Again, a wrong measure. Scale to 
depriving someone from something. Now notice, some of the scholars said Allah Azza wa Jal gave an example of provision, wealth. But it, it, it's applicable to everything else, a human being. Your, your uh, health is another test. If Allah gives you health or deprives you from health, right? That's also applicable. If you see some Muslim who is being always ill and afflicted by this sickness and that sickness, don't say, oh, Allah is mad with this person. Allah is upset. Allah is this guy incurred Allah's wrath. He's always, Allah is always afflicting him with illnesses. No, that's not necessarily true. We have to see the state of that person. Before and after, before was he a pious person and after was he contempt? And then we know how to weigh and what scale to use to measure things. The Prophet وسلم, again correcting this uh, wrong perception. And this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as sound by an Albani, narrated by Abu Hurairah. The Prophet وسلم, said, uh, affliction continues to befall the believer in man and the believing woman in his body and his offspring and his wealth until he would be walking on earth not having a sin on him meaning on in his record of deeds so being afflicted is not always a sign of humility and punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. This wrong understanding or perception of deprivation or, or favors uh, from Allah Azza wa Jal uh, in the hearts of mankind amongst who are disbelievers. Allah Azza wa Jal is exposing to them in the Quran what goes on in their minds and hearts when things like this happen? Again, as a sign to them and reassurance to the believers that I am the Lord. I even know what goes on in your mind. So believe in me. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Kalla bal la tukrimun al -yateen. No! But you do not honor the orphan. Now the, the word no kalla here is used for rebucking the, uh, the disbelievers and the disobedient. Uh, meaning no the issue or the matter is not how you, be, how you perceive it. It's not how you believe. It's not how you think. It's not how you claim. The issue is different. So the issue is not that when Allah is giving someone or depriving someone, it's because He honors the first one and humiliates the other one. The issue is not that Allah Azza wa Jal only gives those whom He loves. He can give a disbeliever and deprive a disbeliever. The issue is not like you claim. The issue is that Allah Azza wa Jal will hold people to account. You do not honor the the orphan. Now, the issue of, of the orphan mentioned in this verse has to be detailed a little bit. See, honoring the, the orphan is not by simply, simply giving him a, a meal or a set of clothes or something like that. Maintaining the orphan is the task spoken about here. And that's in all aspects. And the best, as the scholar said, is when someone actually takes the orphan and upbrings him himself. He makes him eat from the food of his children so he doesn't feel distinction, right, between him and the other children. You dress him from the same clothes you dress your children. You make him live with your children. And the most important, is that you Islamically raise him just like you do with your own children. And this is why this is a special rank because this is a very tough responsibility and only those with true perseverance and patience can tolerate that. 
You know, it's a challenge raising your own child, let alone raising someone else who's not from you. It's tough enough maintaining your child upon the true path. And in our current time, the challenge has increased because of the environment that we're living in. So honoring the Yateen, the Prophet ﷺ, this is why the Prophet ﷺ gave this high prize for the person who actually sponsors by means of all aspects of the, the orphan. In the book of Imam Muslim, he said, Me and the one who sponsors, now with the definition, the detailed definition, the orphan will be like this with me in Jannah. This close to me in Jannah. And he pointed with his pointer and the middle finger. Now this, this rank is, is very high. To be this close to Muhammad wasallam means that you've done something really good. And it was really testing and demanding. But you persevered. Allah is telling them, the situation is not like you, you claim. You do not give the rights to the orphans. Why? Because oppressing uh, the weak in Mecca was uh, prevalent. And particularly pertaining to inheritance for orphans. They, take, they used to possess it without due right. Use trickery to possess it and deprive the orphan uh, from it. وَلَا تَحَاضُونَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ مِسْكِينَ And you do not encourage one another to feed the poor. Allah Azza wa Jal negated the matter of simply encouraging one another, let alone feeding itself. So it's not that you do not feed. No, it's, it's something worse than that. You don't even verbally talk. You don't encourage one another by words. You don't even exert this simple effort in helping uh, the needy or the poor by giving them uh, food. وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْلًا لَمَّا وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا And you consume inheritance uh, taking it all together <coughs> Meaning, you didn't care or you do not care whether you consume it legally, lawfully, or uh, unlawfully. And you love wealth, وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ And you love wealth with immense love. Again, so Allah is telling them that you do not understand the essence of being tested. You do not honor the orphan and you do not encourage one another to feed the poor. Contrary to that, you consume unlawfully the inheritance of the, uh, the orphan particularly and you immensely love wealth to the, to the extent that you transgress all boundaries and all limits and all rights of other people. And this, again, was a, a phenomenon during the uh, Meccan period or amongst the Meccans uh, when they dealt with the weak and the orphans uh, in Mecca. So Allah Azza wa Jal is, is condemning their behavior, a behavior that they were practicing uh, all the time. And it's an indirect threat to such a behavior to uh, the people of the Quraysh. And let us conclude with this for this session to resume in the following session. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka tu.